Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review. Today we have yet another release from the Fallout London team, that being the pack known as You Got a License for That by Fallout London. Now, the title itself isn't very descriptive, but what this is is a pack of weapons and armors that are going to be featured in the much larger Fallout London project. If you're not familiar with the project somehow, it is another very large DLC sized overhaul that is going to have a Fallout set in London. And we have been getting a bunch of releases over the course of this project's development where we have gotten different weapons and armors and things like that. And now we have a full on pack with a handful of armors and weapons all in one neat little package. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. In total, you're going to get seven new outfits and two brand new weapons. Now, the thing about these is none of them are going to be added to the level list, nor are they craftable in game. The only way to actually obtain these is to spawn them via the console. And the reason being is this is just a sneak peek of the much larger project. And being as a lot of these take place in London, it would be kind of weird to see these popping up all over the Commonwealth, especially when it comes to the outfit side of things, as we're literally looking at British police uniforms and prisoner outfits, as that's kind of what this pack is themed around. We have the police outfits as well as prisoner outfits, along with some thematic weapons that fit that style as well. So for starters, you're going to get two variants of the police outfit one of which is going to be pre-war and the other is going to be post-war. So one is going to be nice and new and shiny and the other will be tattered with some holes in it. And then there's also a pre and post-war version of the police helmet, the old British style police helmet that may be familiar to some of you out there. Again, pre and post-war, so you have one that is pristine and one that is a bit rusted up and gross looking. And then we also have some brand new prisoner outfits. Again, one is pre-war, one is post-war, so you have a nice clean one and a filthy one. There is also an alternative prisoner outfit. The normal prisoner outfit is a bright yellow and green, whereas the alternative is the classic white and black horizontal stripe outfit that most people associate with a prison jumpsuit. As for the weapons, you have the police truncheon, known to some people as the billy club. This is going to be a new police weapon with a handful of modifications available at the weapons workbench. And there is also the pipe axe weapon. Now there is a small bug that I noticed in my game in regards to the pipe axe weapon and it may not be a problem for everybody, but I will address it when we get to the weapon modification section of this video. Really quick, let's go over the stats of each outfit included in this pack. So for the clean police helmet, we do have a damage resistance of 10, along with a bonus charisma modifier of two, a weight of five pounds and a value of 51 caps. So while wearing this, you will get a bonus charisma as though you are a, let's say friendly police officer. Also included is a headlamp here that is actually functional, which is pretty nice. For the clean police uniform, we have a damage resistance of 10, a weight of five pounds and a value of 20 caps. And this thing is a pretty nice looking, very well detailed and I do like the look of it. And I have a feeling this is going to fit very well in the theme of Fallout London. For the clean prisoner outfit, we have a damage resistance of five, a weight of two and a value of 20 caps. Again, with those bright yellow and green jumpsuit colors. Pretty interesting style for a prisoner outfit. Over here in the US, I haven't really seen anything quite like that, though I haven't spent much time in prison, so I'm not exactly an expert. Then we have the post-war versions of all of these outfits, which are going to have worse stats than their pre-war counterparts. The police helmet is going to have a damage resistance of seven as opposed to its pre-war 10. Still gives you that bonus to charisma, a weight of five pounds and a value of 51 caps. The police uniform post-war is going to have a damage resistance of five, a weight of five and a value of 10 caps. And the post-war prisoner outfit is going to have a damage resistance of five, weight of two and value of 20 caps. Now it's important to note that all of these are actually under armor, so you can wear armor pieces over these. Except for the final outfit, which is the alternate prisoner outfit, which is going to give you the black and white stripes. And this thing actually has a bonus luck of one, but no armor values. It has a weight of three pounds, a value of 10 caps. And then we have the two melee weapons added in this pack. The police truncheon is going to have a base damage of 37, a swing speed of medium, a weight of two pounds and a value of 15 caps. And the pipe axe is going to have a base damage of 37, swing speed of medium, weight of three pounds and a value of 15 caps. Now, a pretty interesting name for this thing, calling it a pipe axe, whereas this doesn't look like an axe at all, but it does look quite like a pipe. So I assume that there will be axe modifications at the weapons workbench. And speaking of the weapons workbench, let's go ahead and test that theory out. Let's start with the police truncheon. When we head over to the upgrade section, we do have some cool options. 
starting with the no upgrade slot where you have no attachment. You can add an barbed wire, which is going to be armor piercing and have improved damage. We have the heavy modification, which adds a bunch of chains and weights to it to have this do even more damage, plus a chance to cripple and extra limb damage. And we also have the nails variant, which is just going to give you a better damage and more weight. And then finally, the screwdriver modification. And I really like this one, just slamming two screwdrivers through it to add some cool piercing damage. Although that's not actually reflected in the stats, this is just going to give you a bonus damage stat. Now, when it comes to the pipe axe, this is the issue I was talking about. When I go to my upgrades, I have nothing here. So I don't know if this part just isn't complete yet. Maybe it's a bug on my end of the game, but I do want to address it just in case anybody out there is experiencing the same thing. Now, hopefully we will see some axe modifications and maybe different axe heads in the future. That would make for a pretty cool mod. I had something in mind for a melee pack a while back and that would look pretty sweet. And since we do have some armors in this pack, let's talk really quick about the armor modifications. Here we can see the helmet does have a section for the police headlamp, though there are no changeable options there as of right now. And the uniform does have the option to add on the different linings, though it does not look like you can put ballistic weave on these. But that only appears to be true for the under armors. If you come down to the alternate prisoner outfit, you can put a ballistic weave on this one, which gives you up to a potential 110 damage and energy resistance. Hey yo, Dak from the future here in the editing process. Turns out I goofed when it comes to those weapon stats we showed off earlier. My character had the big leak perk maxed out, so that was actually the maximum damage available for these weapons. Here's the true stats. The police truncheon and the pipe axe both have a base damage of 18, which gets maxed out to 37 with the big leaks perk. And with the best damage attachment on the truncheon, you only get to a damage of 32 without perks. So these are some pretty low level melee weapons, but it's a melee weapon. And uh, if you're using that in Fallout 4, you're a bit crazy to begin with. All right, now it's time for our damage tests. So today we'll be trying each of the melee weapons included in this pack on a Deathclaw with the best attachments available, as well as maxed out big league perks, because I don't expect you to try challenging a Deathclaw one-on-one -on -one with a melee weapon unless you're using a melee build. Not to mention these things have some pretty low base damage, so you're going to need just about every edge that you can get. Starting with the Pipe Axe, since I can't seem to get any attachments on it, let's see how it does against a Deathclaw. And it seems like the answer is not great. We're already about five swings in here. I don't think this is the ideal way to take on a Deathclaw. Ten swings, we're just over half health. Make that 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 hits for a Deathclaw. Which I suppose for a weapon with no attachments, that's not terrible. Though I do have maxed out Big League's perk, so it kind of balances itself out. Let's see how we do with the Billy Club that has the heavy modifier. Seven, eight. Ooh, we actually beat 10 hits. So with a total of nine, the max out Billy Club, not too shabby, though I was hitting the Death Claw's weak spot, and that may be a bit harder to do in actual combat, but somewhere between 10 and 20 hits, you'll bring down a Death Claw with a melee weapon, no sweat. So yeah guys, that is the Fallout London Police and Prisoner Weapon and Armor Pack. Pretty nice little thing and a cool sneak peek as to what may be coming in the bigger Fallout London project. If you want to try this one out for yourself, it will be linked down in the description below as always. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a rating. Subscribe if you haven't already for more videos just like this, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace! And really quick, I'd like to make a shout out to all of our patrons. Your donations are greatly appreciated and really help to support the channel and videos just like this one. So again, thank you.